we we can't let the Hebrew Israelite camps teach the church how to be. I'm not reacting to no false teacher. I'm just not gonna do it. I'm going to preach the Bible and I'm going to stand on the Bible. And if folk want to leave the Bible because some false doctrine is being preached on the corner, then you were never in the truth in the first place. We can't let the world, the camps, the false teachers dictate to the church how to be the church. We got to be the church. If we listen, we're going to be reacting to a whole bunch of stuff. Then. We all might as well have service on Saturday, then, right? Because that's what they're going to tell us. We all might as well stop eating certain meats. Why? Because that's what they're going to tell us. We can't jump to their music. No, we, I don't dance to their music. We dance to the scriptures. And when the scripture speaks, that's what we speak. But no, we cannot be reactive as the church. We have to be proactive, preaching the gospel, standing on truth. Whoever wants truth, going to get this truth. If you decide to go off to one of them false camps, then, then, then you left the truth. But we cannot be reactive when it comes to the gospel. Well, oh, listen, when, there, when there's good gold, there's always counterfeit gold. It's always going to be counterfeit, and it's always going to be the real thing. So I'm sitting here representing the real thing. Now, I can't speak for the Benny Hens of the world, but I'm representing the real thing. All right, grace and peace, everybody. God bless you. This is Elder Mike with your urban church, and we are educating the culture for Christ. Grateful, grateful, grateful to be on tonight. Uh, uh, grateful for all of you that are jumping on. Won't be on long tonight. Um, we just get a couple things situated, but I want to deal with the subject real quick on how to handle the heretic. <laughs> how to handle uh, the heretic. Um, certainly there are heretics, uh, among us or those that I would say, uh, are, uh, ingrained or captured in doctrines of, uh, heresy. And, uh, I, I do want to say that there can be certain biblical disagreements that aren't heresy. And I'll get into that, uh, just as we go. Uh, but grace and peace. I just want to say blessings to everybody. Appreciate those of you that have joined us. Uh, do me a favor and share the video. Encourage somebody. Let them know Elder Mike is on live uh, about to delve into the word of God. Deal with this, uh, I think, a very uh, needful subject to address uh, that hopefully and prayerfully can be helpful to all of us. Because at the end of the day, uh, we want to please God in all we do. So do me that favor. Those that don't mind, share the video, share the video. Let somebody know that we are live. Let somebody know that we are uh, uh, getting ready to go into the word of God and, and, and pray for us as well, that we, that whatever we say, we say in the spirit of truth and spirit of humility, spirit of love, and most importantly, according to the proper biblical understanding so god bless you all let me give a couple shout outs giving you all the time to share the videos Seely in the house bless you <laughs> always calling us weirdos but bless you <laughs> appreciate you my bro Dwayne thomas is in the house bless you bro yes sir Lil t in the house blessings all right my little bro roger in the house grace and peace my brother all right jonathan salazar he said this this good gold, not counterfeit gold. Man, that's what I'm talking about. That's right. Right. There's a lot of counterfeit out there, unfortunately. However, uh, we got to represent good gold. And how do we know what is good versus not as not what is not good? Uh, it's not predicated upon our opinions or on our feelings. Uh, it has to be predicated upon the Bible. All right. Sister Nelson in the house. Peace and blessings to you, uh, dear sister. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, right, my brother Joe, who is in the house, what's going on? Grace and peace to you, my friend. Sister Shauna Sawyer is in the house, blessings. All right, to you, brother Miles Harris, praise him. He said, Ready to go here, take hunting. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, brother Deacon Carrie Webb is here, bless you, bro. Appreciate you for tuning in. My brother Alton is in the house, grace and peace to you, brother Alton. Man, great job yesterday. I caught a good portion of your uh, interview uh, with the uh, uh, Jewish scholar. So we certainly uh, thank you for all you do. You all subscribe to Alton Johnson's uh, YouTube channel. If you haven't, this brother always puts in work for the kingdom. And we appreciate you, Brother Alton. 
All right, Sister Tracy Michelle, well, bless you. Appreciate you, sis. All right, Richly Redeemed from Detroit is in here. Bless you. All right, Sister Shawna says, Elder, you are truly teaching the truth, and I do pray for you all the time. Sis, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Amen. Please pray for me and continue to lift me, my family, up in prayer. My sister Paris in the house. All right. Uh, no problem, Sister Paris. I understand. I know I'm a little late on tonight, <laughs> but I'm going to jump in this. I think this is something that'll be edifying. So share it. Please share it. All right. Zachary, your uh, grace and peace to you. Bless you, man. He said, love your teachings. Appreciate you, bro. Minister Mallory in the house. God bless you. Peace, brother. All right. This is my cousin in the house. My cousin. Derek Holloway, bless you, man. We got to talk, so let's talk, man. I'm going to have to give you uh, a call, man. But thank you, cuz, for, for jumping on, man. All right. Uh, Terrius Taylor is in the house from Seattle. All right. <laughs> uh, work with me, Roger. I don't even know what I see it. They got to go on the T-shirt. <laughs> but it, I got so, so many sayings. Everybody keeps saying, Mike, you need to put that on the shirt. But work, man, which which saying, man? man we gonna, I think I'm going to have to work that out. <laughs> All right. My brother, Leon Lewis, grace and peace to you in the house family. Pastor, the doctor, Aaron Green, powerful man of God. Appreciate you for turn, tuning in to us. All right. The pastor himself, all the way from Louisiana, Jay Parker is in the house. Listen, those of you who are in uh, the Louisiana area, uh, um, uh, am I messing up, Parker? I'm probably messing up, man. My my brain is is uh is um now where let me get your let me get that right. I'm I'm messing up. I know I am. All right, Lafayette. Uh, you know I got that right. Louisiana. Those in the Lafayette, Louisiana area, y'all reach out to my man Jay Parker. You looking for a church home? Listen. This man is putting me in work and he preaches the truth. Thank you, Jay Parker, Lafayette, Louisiana. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So listen, y'all in the Lafayette area in Louisiana, y'all want to search out my brother right here. I'm telling you, listen, and so put your YouTube channel in the chat, Parker, man. Listen, y'all got to catch this brother's preachings and teachings, man. He putting in work, put your YouTube channel in the chat. You all subscribe to everybody watching me tonight. Those that don't mind, please subscribe to my dear brother's channel. Uh, Embassy Bible Fellowship, Embassy Bible Fellowship, right? Just put that in the YouTube. You'll see Pastor Jay uh, Parker, James Parker, and uh, man, subscribe to Embassy Bible Fellowship YouTube channel. Man, check his messages out. I'm saying he fired up. He's on fire, right? One of my brothers in the faith. Amen. All right, I'm gonna have him on my. I'm gonna have him on here one day, and we're gonna kind of talk about his testimony and all of that. So, uh, go right. Jay Parker, I'm in Pineville, Alexandria. Hey, I don't know how far that is, but hook up with him, uh, Dwayne. All right. All right, listen, let me pray. Let me jump into it. All right, thank you, Roger. See, you got another subscriber, Parker. Man, listen, now don't, don't, now he on fire, but, but, but watch his video after this one tonight, right? <laughs> so now I'm just joking, man. Listen, I'm telling you, you're not going to be disappointed. Parker is a uh, wonderful uh, pastor, wonderful preacher and teacher of the word of God. All right. All right. So listen, let's pray. Let's pray. And let's jump into it. Father God, in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God, we thank you. Praise you once again, God, for being God almighty, being God that can do anything but fail. Father God, we come to you tonight asking that you would equip us, Lord, with words of life, Lord, properly exegeted from the text, Lord, that it might minister grace to the hearers. Lord, give us the grace to be able to deliver your word in truth. Oh, God, Lord, for it's in truth that men are made free. Oh, God, deliver someone from the hand of the enemy, God, Lord, those that are in grasp in heretical teachings, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would deliver them, help them, God, help us to recognize that we aren't battling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, rulers, darkness of this world, God, uh, a spiritual wickedness in high places, God, Lord, help us to be more concerned about the soul, Lord, than about a fight, Lord, give us wisdom tonight on how to deliver the word of God in truth, Lord, and we'll be careful to give your name, praise, honor, and glory, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen.
All right. Hey, all right, Parker. Got some more. Sister Seeley just subscribed. Tracy Lewis just subscribed. Bless you. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Awesome. Listen, y'all not going to be disappointed. I'm telling y'all. You're not. And y'all, I don't, I don't recommend too many folks, but this is a brother that uh, you will be excited to listen to. All right, but let's jump into the, 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 the message on tonight. Um, tonight, we're going to be dealing with how to handle uh, the heretic, how to handle the heretic. So somebody might ask, Mike, uh, what is the heretic? What is a heretic? Well, a heretic or a person in heresy would be defined as an individual who holds to biblical I, I'm going to be careful when I say this because uh, some people may not have considered this to both biblical teachings and practices that are contrary to essential biblical truths. Right. I'm going to say that again. Right. A person who holds to teachings and practices that are contrary to sound biblical truths. And the reason I brought out the practice part, and I'm going to give an example of that uh, tonight, there are people who they will tell you, you know, Elder Mike, we hold to the, uh, 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 essentials of Christian doctrine. You ask them, do you believe in the one God? They say, yes, we believe in the one God. You ask them if they believe that God is one and one, uh, in essence, three distinct persons, uh, in, and they'll say yes. So they hold to the triune nature of our, our God. You ask them if they believe in salvation by grace through faith alone, uh, many of them will say, yes, Mike, we believe in salvation by grace through faith uh, alone. And so they'll 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 you can look at their statement of faith and you'll find that you go through the statement of faith uh, on their websites. And the statement of faith uh, seems as though it is in alignment with the word of God. However, when you carefully consider some of their practices and or some of their teachings, sometimes you will find that they go against sound doctrine. And I'm going to give you an example of that on tonight. Well, uh, let me go to um, how many of you have heard of Pastor uh, Joel uh, Osteen, All right? Pastor Joel Osteen is a person who seems like a really nice guy. <laughs> and again, this is not bash Pastor Joel Osteen hour. That is not my intent. However, this is a correct false doctrine hour, right? Pastor Joel Osteen preaches a gospel that is very problematic when we consider the totality of scripture. Uh, when you have a ministry who has uh, publicly said that they will not preach against sin or sinful lives, right? Thank you, uh, Brother Roger, America's biggest church, right? Uh, they will not preach against sinful lives. Uh, and so you go there, you get the warm and fuzzy message, uh, but you don't get conviction, right? Because I'm going to hear, I'm here to tell you that repentance is an essential doctrine. In a, or uh, the practice of repentance. Bless you, Mike Witt. Thank you so much for the super chat, my bro. Uh, the practice of repentance is essential because no one can be saved unless they truly repent. Now, no one can truly repent unless they have acknowledged their sinfulness and the fact that all have come short of the glory of God. But, uh, but, but so, so I'm churches that refuse to preach against sinful behavior or to identify when people have gone astray or have gotten off track and refuse to deal with sin, that's extremely problematic and falls into the category of heretical practices. And 
It is a practice by virtue of non-compliance. I'll say that again. See, that the Bible is filled with truths, not only that we should practice, but that we should display in our lifestyle. A preacher that does not deal or address, address uh, sin is not a Bible preacher. Go to Acts chapter number two. You'll find that the apostle Peter, when he preached, he preached against the sin of the people. He looked at those Israelites, those uh, 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 Jews that had gathered from all over the world. And he said, you by wicked hands have crucified our Lord through, you know, you did it. It was your wicked deeds. It was your sinful uh, deeds. And what what was their response? Their response was, men and brethren, what shall we do? And the first thing Peter says to them is repent, right? But if you don't preach against the sin, people won't have a conscience of sin, and therefore true repentance can never take place because people will feel comfortable in their sin, and they'll believe a, a false sense of security, believing they could live and practice. I'm, I'm not talking about one-offs. See, I know I was accused by Apostle Lewis of not uh, preaching against sin, but, but the devil is a liar. I'm not calling him a devil, but the devil is a liar. I'm preaching against seeing right now, right? So a person who practices a sinful lifestyle under a false sense of security that God just got to accept him anyway. Well, that's not Bible. And the Bible doesn't teach that, right? But I want to give you an example before, and I'm going to the word of God in just a minute here, but I'm just laying a little foundation. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, Pastor Joel Osteen's uh, statement of faith, right? Now, here, I know that's a little small. Many of you can't see it. I'll see if I can make it bigger, but then I'm going to uh, read it anyway. But notice here is the belief statements. Notice what it says. We believe the entire Bible is the inspired by is inspired by God without error and the, on the authority on which we base our faith, conduct and doctrine. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this statement. Matter of fact, this is a good statement. The Bible is inspired by God. Now, word inspired means God breathed. It is without error. That lets me know that he holds to the essential truth of the inerrancy of scripture. Listen, that is a vital Christian doctrine. People who believe, and I'm not talking about in translations, there could be some faults in translations, but if you're going to hold to sound biblical doctrine, then we believe that the Bible in its original manuscripts as ascribed by the apostles and prophets who wrote the scriptures, they are perfect and without error. And Pastor Olstein says here, the Bible is without error and it's on that authority, right? It is the authority that we base our faith, conduct, and doctrine. Yes, that is entirely true. However, see, this can be deceiving, right? After reading that, you'll say, man, this may be a good church for me to attend. But after careful examination, you find that he does not, he does not preach and teach against sin. So if the whole Bible is without error as pastors, as elders, as preachers, teachers of the word of God. We are obligated to preach it all, not just some of it. You got to preach it all. Hello. <laughs> so just because you say the Bible is without uh, 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 is without error. Right. That's good. You believe that now preach it all, because if it's without error, why are you neglecting to preach it all? That's a problem. All right, let me go on to his next statement of faith here. All right, uh, what did I do? Get back here. Here we go. All right, in one God who exists in three distinct persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We believe Jesus is the Son of God who came to this earth as Savior of the world. So he believes in the triune God, the Trinity. Amen. Right? That is an essential doctrine. Yes, absolutely. So no problem there. Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood for our sins. And we believe that salvation is by placing our faith in what Jesus did for us on the cross. We believe Jesus rose from the dead and it's coming again. See, there's about two or three essential truths in this, right? The second coming, physical coming of Jesus Christ is, uh, is, 
an essential Christian doctrine. So I'm not going to read all of these, but what I'm going to say, I have read them all. And when you read these, there's no issue with any of these, right? There's no issue with any of these. So this is why I have to point out that sal uh, uh when we talk about a sound ministry and and a sound doctrine it is not just checking off a list of the belief statements too many of us do that we got all the my I, I believe in this i believe in that i believe in this and i believe in that and i believe in it right and, and you could check off all the boxes however in ethics right? Which is the other side of the coin. Let me stretch it just a little bit. So what epistemology is the word that simply means uh, um, uh, why something is true or why we believe something, you know, what makes it true. But the other side of that coin is are the ethics. So we can list out the beliefs, but are those beliefs ingrained in the life of the believers, because that's just as important, right? That's just as important. It's one thing to say, I believe the Bible. It's an, it's one thing to even teach from the Bible. It's another thing, church of God to live according to the Bible. So both are just as important. Both are just as important. Sadly here in the, in the West, many people have been deceived to think that as long as I have a mental assent to what is true, then I'm saved, right? You can cuss folk out. <laughs> you can go off on them. You can, you know what I mean? You can do all that. You can, and I'm talking on a regular, right? This is who you are. And, 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 and then, and you, you like, I'm good though, because I believe salvation is by grace through faith. I've confessed with my mouth and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Well, you, you got half of it right, but unless, unless, unless what you believe have translated into a lifestyle, then you really don't believe what you say you believe. Because think about it, church. If you truly believe what you say you believe, then it should translate into your life. So there, there's orthodoxy, which means right teachings. Then there is orthopraxy, which means right practicing or living right living see both are important and i'm let me show you some bible let me show you some bible the saints need proof no problem because we a bible a uh, teacher one of the models of the church that i attend is that we are a bible believing church right and so i believe that we ought to be Bible believing teachers, which is what I strive to be. So if you say, well, Michael, I need some scripture for that. I'm going to say you, you ask the right thing. Let us give you some scripture, right? Now watch this here. We share the screen. Well, not that one. Let me, let me share the Bible this time and let's get to it. Now watch what Paul tells Timothy a young pastor in the faith gives him some sound instructions. Now watch this. And I'll start at verse 13, build some context here. Paul says, okay, Timothy, till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation and doctrine, right? So this is important reading, right? And these are, these were actually uh, uh, liturgical practices. They read the Bible openly to the congregation, these letters or the scriptures to the congregation for a couple of reasons. Well, not everyone was educated and had the ability to read within the culture that Paul was writing to. Therefore, there were certain men who took on the role of reading audibly the word of God openly to the congregation. Then to exhortation. And what is exhortation? This is the declaring or the preaching, right? The, the expounding on what you have read and to doctrine. And the word uh, doctrine here is another word for to the teachings, right? And then he says, do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the eldership. What is Paul doing? This is important, y'all. I'm, go I'm going somewhere, but I want y'all to uh, pick up these nuggets on the way. <laughs> right. Watch what he says here. He's what he's saying to Timothy is your ministry isn't. Um, how could I say it? 
it, it, it isn't a fraud, right? It isn't an illegitimate ministry. Paul is saying that the eldership that has been placed upon you, Timothy, has been done in biblical order, the laying on of hands of the eldership, right? It was given you by prophecy, which is the declaration of what thus saith the Lord over Timothy's life and the laying on of hands. This was a practice of elders and or pastors who would uh, launch other elders into ministry. So he is saying, Timothy, your ministry isn't illegitimate. Sadly, there's too many illegitimate ministries out here, <laughs> right? And, and I got to be real, saints. I know that people feel that they can do what they want and not be accountable to anybody. But if we're honest, that is not the biblical method. Even the apostle Paul. Listen, let me tell you something. Apostle Paul was called by Jesus Christ himself. The apostle Paul um, uh, was handpicked. Right. And the Lord said, I'm going to show him what things he must suffer for my name. He's going to be a minister for me. He's going to teach for me. He's going to uh, uh, preach to others for me. Right. But even though he was handpicked by the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you still find him following the biblical order of being uh, going to the apostles and getting the right hand of fellowship and being sent out by the leadership into ministry. Now, Paul could have got the big head and said, listen, God called me. I don't need to follow nobody, but that's not God's order. God's order is just that order. <laughs> and, and so what Paul is telling Timothy here, I know folk don't get this and I, we don't hear about this too, too much because we got too many rogue believers, rogue saints out here. But Paul is saying, listen, Timothy, your ministry isn't illegitimate. All right. I'm not teaching on that tonight, but I guess I did. But let me try to move on here. Right. Verse 15. Now, meditate on these things, Timothy. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. So anybody you feel you call to ministry. Listen here. I got to understand. You, you got to understand something. Right. It, the work of the ministry involves a self-sacrifice. He says to him, give yourself entirely. See, you can't be, when you are a pastor or a teacher or an elder, and really this should be this way for the saints, right? You can't be part-time. You are 24 seven, a representative of Jesus Christ. And this should be applied to everybody, really. But Paul is specifically dealing here with this leader because the leader has responsibility to display that before the people. You know, give yourself entirely to them. You can't say my office hours. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying let the people kill you. Now, don't get me wrong. Now, they are, uh, there's an order for people coming. Don't let people call you all at three in the morning and getting you all out. Your no, no, don't do that either. That's the other extreme. But what I'm saying is you can't take a vacation from righteousness, right? You can't say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not a pastor. It's Friday and I'm in Vegas. And what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. You know what I mean? No, 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 Pastor. You in Vegas, you still God's representative, right? You go to Hawaii on vacation, you still God's representative. You still have to display the fruit of the spirit. You still have to live according to what God have uh, encouraged us in the word of God. You cannot say that, you know what, my wife and I on our honeymoon, or we on our uh, so-and-so and -so second, third, fourth, fifth anniversary, so I can get drunk in the room. I, no, no, Pastor. You no, know, you can't. Hello. You can't do that. You've got to be, there, there's no time off. We 24 seven believers in Jesus Christ and 24 seven, our lives should be practicing a lifestyle that is pleasing to him. All right. This is why Paul says, Timothy, give yourself entirely everything in you, bro. See, see, uh, 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 I love the word of God. And so you got to pray, God, give me a passion for the word of God. See, you know, you can't watch all the TV all day long and all night long, you know, give yourself entirely to why everybody else watching TV. You know what I'm saying? You got to be studying. Lord have mercy. Uh, it's just so much in this. Let me get past this. He says that your progress may be evident to all. In other words, the, the, the calling upon your life will be validated right through your uh, through 
the ministry God gives you. It'll be validated, right? But guess what? If you're not called, that's going to be validated too, <laughs> right? If you're not putting in the biblical work, that's going to be validated too. But say, no, see, Timothy, if you give yourself entirely to them, see, your, the, the prophet, the blessing is going to be seen by all. In other words, God is going to justify it through the fruit that comes through the ministry that he's called you to. Now, it doesn't mean everybody's called to uh, have hundreds and members. Everybody is. Everybody not called to a mega church. Everybody not called to pastor six, seven, eight, nine hundred people. Everybody not. Called. That doesn't mean that. So don't judge that by membership either. But what I'm talking about is the fruit of uh, edification, holy living, righteousness, people coming out of darkness, people being delivered from false teaching. Right. So so that has to be understood. Now, watch this. Verse 16. This is important. Notice what this this now this I, I say it all of that to get to this point right here. So if don't zone out on me right now, I need all everybody to focus in on me right now. Notice what Paul says: take heed to yourself, yourself, and to the doctrine. Let me color that a different color. You see that? Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine, not just to the doctrine. I don't see. Again, not just to checking off all the boxes. See, see, I, we went to Joel Osteen's um, website and saw his what we believe statements, and he checked off the boxes. He checked the boxes off. But this is what he's lacking on this side. See, there's a lot of churches that that they're uh, that, you know they would appear to hold to the essential truths of Christian doctrine, but then you look up, they throwing money on the altar. They talk about bless the man of God, sow a thousand dollar seed, and in three days you're gonna get your blessing. See, you that you may check off all the boxes on one side, but your ethical behavior is contrary. So heresy can go beyond. This is all this to say this, y'all. Heresy and being heretical can go beyond what we call the essential truths of the Christian faith, but also practices. If the orthopraxy isn't in line with the orthodoxy, in other words, if your life or the ethics don't line up with what you believe or, or why you believe the, your epistemological stance, then you can still be in heresy. Right. And then notice what Paul says, continuing them, continuing what? Taking heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue for in doing this. Now, check this out, y'all. This is some good stuff. For this is, and y'all need this verse here. This is 2 Timothy. I'm sorry, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. 1 Timothy 4, verse 16. He says, For in doing this, what? Taking heed to yourself and the doctrine, he says, You will save both yourself and those who hear you. See, you will save both yourself so you gotta take heed to yourself you'll save yourself and then when you preach the right doctrine you'll save those that hear you see you see how that works <laughs> this is important stuff right here y'all so we have to do it thank you kl you said it beautifully right interpretation and right application of scripture absolutely so that has to be taken into consideration. Now, let's get to this. Now, when it comes to people in false doctrine, how then should we go about? How then should we go about handling them? There have been some conversation. I might get kind of some of y'all might even disagree with me, but but but, but y'all know another one of my sayings we might need to put on this a t-shirt is uh this gonna bless you. I think I think this gonna bless you right here because there's been some discussions about you know, how to handle the heretic. And there are some who believe that, you know, it's okay to get smart with a heretic. <laughs> I mean, it's okay to holler and scream at them and call them out their name. It's okay to even cuss because they coming against our God. Let, let me, let me go to some old Bible here. I feel a spirit of resistance. I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of joking. <laughs> Let's go to second Timothy chapter number two here. Second Timothy two. And 
I'm going to break what the Bible says. See, all these folks be talking. See, they, and then they, they, they play it off. Like, I do this because I love Jesus. No, sometimes you did it because you was mad. You did it because you was angry. Don't blame it on God. They, I, 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 I can't stand people who, 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 who talk bad against my God. And I can't I, see. I can't be weak. No, no. Let me tell you something. Meekness is not weakness. It's not weakness at all. See, anybody can go off. Trust me. You know, I would be lying to you if I told you that Elder Mike uh, never feel like going off. <laughs> Oh, Ella Mike feel like going off sometime. Oh, ho, 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 yes, I do. Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> and can I be honest about something else? Ella Mike has gone off sometimes and have had to repent. <laughs> okay. Can I be real? Can we be real? And I've had to repent and say, God, help me. Because if I'm going to be a representative of you, then, then there are people that are not only listening to me, but watching me. You see that? <laughs> who have Z but my sister this sister said a mouthful some of us get more upset than God <laughs> Woo, that's good stuff right there alright thank you Robert so but, but let's be clear that meekness isn't weakness okay so just because you called me out my name and I looked at you and smiled <laughs> don't think that I didn't have the ability to respond. Okay. Don't think that don't for one moment think I forgot how to get in the flesh and definitely don't think we scared of nobody. <laughs> right. I fear God. Right. And I don't say that to boast at all. See, we even have to be careful with statements like that. So I don't say that to say I'm all of that. Cause trust me without God, I'm nothing, but I am here to say that, Anybody could go off. Anybody lose their temper. All right. We got to stop blaming God sometimes on our lack of spiritual maturity. We got to stop blaming God. So I'm going to go to the Bible here and we're going to talk about how Paul dealt with some of this. Let's talk about how Paul dealt with some of this. All right. Second Timothy chapter two. Right. And I, I can't deal with this text like I want to and fool. And so we'll be on here all night. All right. But, but let me, let me, uh, let me break it down <laughs> out and said, ah, <laughs> all right. But let me break this down. Watch this. Be diligent. This is second Timothy two 15. All right. Be diligent to present yourself. See the, here it goes again. Present yourself approved to God. See, this is Paul really is repeating himself. Sometimes we've run, we we kind of pass over this part and we get right down here to rightly divide the word of truth. So you ain't rightly dividing the word of truth. Yeah, that's true. But but we run right past this part. Present yourself approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed. See, sometimes you should be ashamed by behaviors that are not approved by God. And just because you save don't mean God approves all your behaviors. See, Paul says, so be diligent. In other words, you got to work at this, right? Be diligent. It is a practice that we present ourselves approved to God, a worker who doesn't need to be ashamed, then rightly dividing the word of truth. All right, let me move on. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. So there are people who are talking nothing. Profane is that which is ungodly or that which is vile or that which is contradictory to scripture. And idle, this word idle means empty babblings. So there are a lot of people that's talking a lot and saying nothing. That's what idle babblings are, right? They, they talk a lot, but they're not saying anything sound or edify. Paul says, Timothy, Timothy, you avoid folks that are not talking sound, edifying doctrine, but rather they're talking profane, contradictory, that which is ungodly, that goes against scripture. And then notice what Paul says, for they will increase to more ungodliness. So notice, no, this, this is important. Oh my goodness. Y'all catch this. So bad information leads to more ungodliness. So bad teaching leads to bad behavior. 
bad conduct, bad ethics. See, watch folks that could just, <laughs> you know, can, can just be ungodly and don't even blink and be looking at you like, huh? <laughs> huh. Like, like, huh? what I do? The devil is a lie. No, you need to practice, right? Watch this. Their message will spread like a cancer. Now, watch Paul deal with a couple heretics. He calls them out. Hymenaeus and Philetus are of this sort. So how do we handle the heretic? Well, it's it's there's nothing wrong with identifying who the heretic is. Now, let's be clear here that Paul would have done his Paul would have done his uh, due diligence. Right. You don't just a person say something wrong and all of a sudden you just blast them. No, Paul would have done his due diligence and reached out to these individuals. Right. But. Paul says they have strayed concerning the truth. You know what this means? We They were in the truth, or at least they appeared to be in the truth, but they've strayed. A stray is some person who was in line, and now he's gotten out of line. So Paul is at liberty now to have to expose these men because Paul doesn't want people to hear their message and catch that bad doctrine cancer. So he says, Hymenaeus and Philetus are of this sort. So, so these two brothers have increased to more ungodliness through vain babblings, right? They've strayed concerning truth. And here was the truth that they strayed away from, saying that the resurrection is already passed. Do you all know that they're full preterists that still preach this today? The resurrection has not already passed. I can prove it. I'm here and I'm not in my glorified body. So that's proof that the resurrection hasn't already passed. And notice the reason we have to address false doctrine. So how do we handle a heretic? We don't just smile at him and say it's going to be okay. No, brother, you have strayed. You're preaching false doctrine. Paul called out the individual. Then he dealt with the doctrine. This is what they say. The resurrection is already passed. This is her heretical and it has overthrown the faith of some. You see that? Identify the individuals or groups that may be preaching or teaching it. Identify the actual teachings. Identify it. I'm sorry. Identify the danger in it is here. Those straight concerning the truth. Identify the doctrine. The resurrection is passed already. That was the heresy. And then the danger here, they've overthrown the faith of some. All right. This, so Paul is saying we're dealing with this so your faith doesn't get overthrown. Then Paul goes on to say, nevertheless, the foundation of God standing sure, having a seal. The Lord knows those that are his. Let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Notice this doesn't say depart from bad doctrine. Now, that's inclusive because bad doctrine is iniquity. But he says depart from iniquity. Right. What is iniquity? Iniquity are those secret sins of the heart. Right. Those those pet sins that the ones you don't want to get rid of, you know, that attitude problem. Depart from it. If you name the name of Christ, depart from iniquity. So you know what Paul is doing? He's pointing right back to what he said in verse uh, 15, presenting yourself approved. So brother, you got to depart from iniquity. It's not just about what you teach. It's about how you act. It's about your ethics. It's about your conduct, right? I'm just going to scroll down here for the sake of time, All right? He goes on to tell Timothy how, flee you for lust, pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart, but avoid foolish and ignorant disputes. See, there's a time and a season for all things. There's some folk just want to argue, right? Now there's a time to address. Y'all have seen me bring people on and have conversations, right? There's nothing wrong with that, right? But at some point that some, you got to avoid ignorant disputes. Some folks just want to argue for the sake of arguing. They're trying to build their name on your platforms, right? And all they want to do is generate strife. Now, but here it is. Now, again, our subject tonight, you all, is how to handle a heretic. Now, I want y'all to catch what Paul is getting ready to say, because I think that this can be a blessing to the ministries that God has called all of us to do. Now, watch what Paul says here in verse number 25. In humility. So that's step one, right? Be humble. But I'm the one got the truth. Yeah, but you still got to be humble with it. Be humble with it. In humility, correcting those 
who are in opposition. I'm going to say that again, because this is a lost art. 21st century saints think that they can just say, you old fish ad demon. No, no, no. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition. You blankety blank. No, no brother, no sister. In humility. Cor now, Paul didn't say don't correct them. No, we do correct them. But we correct them in humility. Ooh. Question. Have you, while being saved recently, maybe a year or two ago, uh, used vulgar language and had to repent of it? Uh, not that I can recall. Not that I can recall within the last uh, year or two. Uh, not that I can recall. I'll be honest about that. <laughs> not that I can recall. Um, however, you know, all of us, you know, I'm certainly I've had to repent of, you know, allowing myself to get too upset and respond. Now, don't I'm not saying that to say I'm, you know, I ain't sitting up here telling you I ain't seen in 15 years. That's a lie from the pit. <laughs> and, and so the person who told it is a lie. Right. But but I am saying. Uh, I can't recall necessarily saying using vulgar, but y'all know we, how many y'all know that the saints, uh, we have mastered the art of being nice, nasty. <laughs> yeah. oh, we, we know how to get with you <laughs> in a sweet way. Uh, see, um, brother, um, because of your ignorance and, uh, my friend, uh, your, uh, uh, retardedness, um, you and your, uh, let me see, uh, because your dumbness, uh, my friend, uh, you don't see this because, um, you're a hellbound, um, demon, uh, from the pit, uh, my brother, um, uh, I love you, uh, you, you we going off <laughs> nice. That nice, that's real nicety. We we know how to do. We know how to get with some folks. Nice, right? Come on here, y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, listen here, um, you in your uh, uh lack of education, in your uh, weirdness. Uh, come on, man. <laughs> we know how to do it, Doc. And right, right, Kenneth. He's and then in well, and God loves you, and so do I. Uh, with your uh demon possessed self, uh, my friend. <laughs> we we've mastered the art of niceness, y'all. We need to repent of niceness. Now, don't get me wrong. There are there are now. Now that does not mean you don't. This is. Let me go back to the verse. Let me go back to the verse. That does not mean. <laughs> That does not mean that you don't correct those in opposition. No, you correct the false doctrine. Don't you, preacher, teacher, don't you let, bless you, Pastor Ryan, <laughs> don't you let uh, false doctrine prevail. No, I correct. Listen, brother, that's heresy. Brother, that doctrine is damnable. Brother, that doctrine. And, 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 and let me just clarify this too. The word brother don't just have to mean Christian. I know we've sanctified the word. Hey, why you call him a brother? Just because you the bro, we we all Americans, okay? That we can, we can, Paul called the unsaved Israelites his brethren from a national standpoint, right? So sometimes it's just a cultural expression. Y'all quit tripping. For real, man, the saints be tripping. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, see, I can't get with him because he called him brother. Y'all trip. Y'all, y'all too spiritual. <laughs> Stop tripping, right? I'm telling him he's in heresy. Okay. <laughs> so don't think that every time we use the word brother, we mean brother in Christ. It don't it don't always mean that. All right. I had to clarify that because some some of my overrighteous saints. All right. My brother Jonathan here. Bless you, bro. Yes, sir. Me and you got to talk, my friend. Let me know what times you got available. I saw your message late. Uh, I, I had a sister tell me I need to be delivered the other day because I disagreed with her. See, yeah, see, see. <laughs> uh, uh, see, that's that's what I'm talking about. When people dis listen, folks disagree with me all the time. I'll be cussing all day if if it was predicated on the number of folk disagree with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's right, Pastor Ryan. Jesus called Judas friend. 
but Trey style me would some of y'all would have been like you going to bust hell wide open with your old nasty self Judas don't kiss me which don't put your lips on me you know that's what we to say <laughs> thank you dunamis bless you bro shout out to dunamis in the house some church folks more like he says uh, machiavelli than messiah yes sir doc <laughs> right like we a gang you know, we'd be going around like, who, 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 who that teaching false doctrine? What's up? You know, what's up? Like, bro, we're not a Christian gang. <laughs> we're, we're not a Christian gang, y'all. All right. Let me finish what Paul said. Y'all got me cutting up here. Let me finish what Paul said. So, so in humility, in humility, in humility, correcting. So, so don't forget the correcting now. See, because some people say, see, that's because y'all are weak Christians. No, you a carnal Christian. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> uh, you see, y'all weak. See, you got to you got to know how to check these people. You got to get with them when they talk about my God, when they talk about my Jesus. Look, let me tell you something. God don't need you to fight for him. <laughs> he really don't. Now, correct the false doctrine. Move on, bro. Sis, whatever Right now, correcting those who are in opposition. Watch this. If God perhaps will grant them repentance. But let me go back to verse 24, because this this we got to get the full context of this before he even says in humility. He says, and a servant of the Lord must not quarrel. Y'all know what quarrel mean. It mean fight. Don't get me wrong. We fight the good fight of faith, but we talking about fight now. Blah, blah, blah. You another one. Yo mama. Yeah, la, 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 la. I know this one so-called apologist. I mean, he be talking about people. Mama. He be like, yeah, your mother's of this. You evil, this, that, blanket. He be cussing. Then he be like, okay, now let's turn to the scripture. I'm like, dude, dude, stop it. Now, his doctrine is right. Can I let me let me let me let me rewind that and say that again? His doctrine is right. But and he's correcting, he may be correcting Muslims sometime, and he telling them the truth. He telling them the truth. But then he turned around and say, You devil, see, that's why you're devil, and you the your mama was a devil, and you the I'm like, dude, dude that, that ain't God. Y'all hear me? That's not God. Clean cussing. I like that, sister Tracy. You will know how to cuss clean. Lord have mercy. Thank you, uh, Joe. Put a uh, Romans eleven twenty five in here. All right, because Israel were his brethren after the flesh. All right. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Right. I was trying not to call him out, but yes. Now some of his doctrine wrong. Don't get me wrong, but some of it he be talking right. I can't get with him though. I can't get with him. And that your ethics aren't right. Right. Take heed to yourself and the doctrine. Take heed to yourself and the doctrine. Right. All right. Now, let me let's read on. Now, watch this. The servant of the Lord must not fight. And I'm going to put that in the me IV version. He must not quarrel. Right. It doesn't mean you don't engage. Sometimes you have to contend for the faith. Right. Sometimes you have to di even dispute. But quarreling has reference to now it's gone beyond reasonable discussion and y'all just fighting now. Right. See, that's why your doctrine false. You, that's why you that, that that's why you a demon and you, you you not even teaching now you're not trying to help this person anymore see the servant of the lord must not quarrel watch this y'all y'all ain't gonna like this i know y'all but, but don't i don't want nobody to unsubscribe tonight just pray right but be gentle to all uh but be gentle to all now gentle don't mean weak now nah. Thank you, Brother Carnell. Shout out to my brother from another mother. Right? Be gentle. Right now. Now, again, this doesn't mean that you got to be weak. Like, oh, OK. Oh, oh, no, no, no. I don't I don't do that. <laughs> no, no, no. But gentleness can you can correct them. But gentle to all. This is the Bible, y'all. Right. Thank you, Pastor Ryan. Handle with care. Right. Handle with care. Right. You want to know why you got to handle with care? Because that's a soul steal. Sometimes we forget that that's a soul. I'm going to tell y'all. 
if God were to ever, and thank God he, he will not do this. I don't believe uh, none of those books where people talking about, you know, divine revelation of hell. I went to hell for that. The, you lying, Sister Baxter. You lying. You have not gone to hell. Uh, you lie. Divine revelation. Of you're a liar. You're a liar. Stop lying on God. I don't believe none of that. <laughs> Y'all pray my strength, but I don't believe none of that. If God were to drop us in hell for 30 seconds, just 30 seconds, and then snatch us back out, I promise you the horror, the pain, and the anguish of hell, you wouldn't want it for your worst enemy, and you would be pleading with people. They could be calling you out your name and you'll be, you'll still be crying. Man, you don't understand, man. Come to Jesus. You don't know, man. Hell is, hell is torture. The, uh, there will be a, 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 a pain eternally, man. I'm to, you'll have so much patience. Thank God. I don't listen. I don't need 30 seconds in hell. I plead and thank God he doesn't do that. But I'm just saying when we realize the horrors of the damnation of the unjust, our heart, our heart will go out to them. Yeah, Joe, I don't believe them. I, and I won't get into it tonight, but I think they lying. <laughs> our hearts should go out to them. You understand what I'm saying? Because you recognize, you, you, I'm serious. You'll be like, man, calling me out my name, you know, Pagan Mike, whatever. Doc, hell is too long and too horrible. I'm here to tell you, you'll have so much patience. And that's what we should be focused on. And, and that's the mentality we got to have. The person that I'm talking to, if they don't repent, they are going to hell. <laughs> so it ain't about me. <laughs> you see, this is how the apostles were. They were being stoned, saying, forgive them, Lord. Look what Stephen said. Lord, forgive them. Lay not this sin to their charge. Peter, uh, Stephen understood that if you lose out with God, <laughs> it is over. Being stoned. Stephen didn't get up and start throwing stones back. Y'all talking about my Jesus. See, I just, I'm sorry, Peter. I just had to go there with them because they was talking about my God. I don't let nobody talk about my God. Stephen sat there and took every stone, took every stick. So they gnashed on him with their teeth. He took every insult and, uh, and they, they stoned this man so much so till he died. You want to know how many stones you got to get hit with to die? The contusions your body have had to take in order to die. The palpitations of your heart, the unconsciousness of your brain. Perhaps he had a concussion before he died. Perhaps his ribs were broken before he died. I'm, I'm painting this picture because I need us to see this, y'all. His ribs and maybe his legs in his face, no doubt he was bleeding before he died. The sores that he had, no doubt he needed stitches and everything before he died. And while he was sitting there with a concussion, no doubt with broken bones, bleeding from top to bottom, he still gazed up into heavens and said, Father, forgive them. Lay not this sin to their charge. Hello. Hello. So I'm going to get to that verse, Pastor Ryan. Thank you for that. All right. See, see, let, let, let me, let's go back here. Let's go back here to the text. Cause I don't want y'all to think this is just elder Mike. No. Cause listen, elder Mike want to go off too sometime, but I got to remember the servant of the Lord. Listen, my pastor planted this scripture in my spirit a long time ago. And it has stuck with me. Right. Dr. Quentin Wingate loved the man. He said, serving. And I would watch him when people would talk about him. And he would always say this. I'll be mad, <laughs> ready to go off because they talking about him. You know, he'll look at me. He'll say, Mike, the servant of the Lord must not strive. 
The servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all. But pastor, you don't hear, you understand what they saying. The servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all. Able to teach. Woo, look at this word right here. Patient. Patient. Then in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. And why do we do this? Right. If God perhaps will grant them repentance. Now, we want this person to come to save in faith. Oh, I know they sound like a, a two legged devil right now. I know their doctrine is so heretical. You can stand to listen to it. But still, they are not too far. They are not too far where God can't reach them. Some folk we done gave up on that God have it. See, you think because you sick and tired of them, God sick and tired of them. You think because you think they're going to hell that God want them to go to hell. No, God want them to be saved. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. See, watch verse 26. And that they may come to their senses. They're not going to come to their senses while you losing yours. And escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. So yeah, they doing the will of the devil. Yes. And they've been taken captive by him. But guess what? My prayer is that they come to their senses so they can escape the snare of the devil. So you know what I start to think? Some folk don't really want people to escape. Right? <laughs> Some folk don't really want, they want them to bust hell wide. Oh, you talk, oh, oh, you talked about me, the man of God. Oh, God going to get you. <laughs> they want people. No, that's not the mentality Jesus had. Jesus stretched out his arm toward Jerusalem and said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I have gathered you? Like a hen does her chicklings. Do you know what that expresses? It expresses the love that he desired to express over a people who would just a few days from that hang him on a rugged cross. That just a few days from that would nail uh, 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 stakes in his hands. Right. Would pluck the hairs from his beard, would spit in his face. But he said, oh, Jerusalem, I desired, I loved, I wanted to gather you. I wanted to save you. See, and if that's not our heart, then we probably stop. Don't need to stop talking to people and ask God to help us work on loving people enough to where we ourselves can be taken out of the picture. See, see, I want them to escape, right? Now, Pastor Ryan just put a scripture on the board. I'm going to go to it real quick in the book of Titus chapter number two. I think it is. Yes, verse, uh, no, I'm sorry, Titus chapter one, I think. I'm going to have to go back to it. Hold on, let me go back to it, which will make sure I got the one you put up there, past it. Uh, let's see here. One moment. Yeah, two and nine, that's right. Titus two, verse nine. It says, I thought it was a different verse, but it says, exhort bond service to be obedient to their own masters, to be well-pleasing in all things, not answering back, not pilfering, but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior in all things. So the principle expressed here is that just because folks get ugly don't mean you got to get ugly. That's all this is saying. If they get ugly, you stay godly. That's, that's the principle here. But let's jump back to chapter one which might be what he meant, right? Watch verse number seven. Are you with me? Verse seven says, for a bishop or elder or, must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not quick tempered. You always losing your temper. Stop blaming the devil. Talking about they made me lose it. No, you lost it because you need to work on tempers and ask God for help and he'll help you. Not giving away. See, I ain't even gonna, I ain't gonna mess with y'all on that because I know y'all gonna struggle. See, but leader, you can't be the, the, the drunk. You can't be the one always tipsy. Not violent. This isn't just physical violence, y'all. This is not just physical violence. 
not greedy for money. See? But hospitable. A lover of what is good. Sober-minded, just, holy, self-controlled. Y'all see that? Self-controlled. And in the midst of that, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and convict those who contradict. Now, we'll focus right here on the sound doctrine and forget that Paul said you can't be given over to wine. You can't be quick tempered. Right. You can't be self-willed. We've, all of that is a part of exhorting and convicting those who contradict. For there are many insubordinate, both idle talkers and deceivers. Yes, especially those of the circumcision. And he was talking about those Jews who failed to accept Christ. Paul said, whose mouths must be stopped because they subvert whole households, teaching things which they ought not for the sake of dishonest gain. So Paul isn't saying, cor don't correct them, you all. We do correct false doctrine. We do correct false teachers. He said, I'm about to lose 10% of my subscriber. Lord have mercy. <laughs> I hope I don't. But if I do and they left because I was preaching the truth, then so be it. I'm like Jesus. I'll say to the other 90%, will you also go? <laughs> I ain't begging nobody to stay. And I'm sure not going to compromise the truth for no subscribers. All right. But uh, ho hopefully y'all stick around. Hopefully y'all stick around. <laughs> right. Thank you, Brother Roger. There's a way to correct. Right. Right. I got three sons. I have three sons. Right. When they got off track, I corrected them. I didn't correct them by saying you dummy. I, I no, that's how you just don't call your kids. Don't don't do that. I didn't correct them by uh, taking a baseball bat and hitting them in the head. <laughs> no, I might have took a belt and put it on a behind. <laughs> right. But I didn't correct them by calling them out their name. You dummy. You stupid. No, parents that do that, that, that stuff be boiling me. Yeah, and if you're doing that, repent of it and stop. No, we don't. I don't. I, I never did that. Never. You might have felt like it sometimes. What they did might have been dumb <laughs> and they or, or crazy. And you know you didn't raise them like that. Right? You you didn't raise them like that, but 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 uh but no, I didn't. I say, boy, you smarter than that. You are not dumb. You are not stupid. So you didn't have to do this. See, that's what I told him. And I corrected him. Now, that correction, sometimes I had to put a little something on the backside. I think God by design have placed, uh, and my pastor says it this way, uh, and, I thought, and, I, and I'll borrow it right now. Uh, God have given us a soft spot on the body with no immediate bones in the area. <laughs> That, 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 that we can properly chastise the children. Oh yeah, I'm not them. I'm not a time out kind of father. <laughs> All right. Hello. All right. Joseph, what about this? Titus three T and a man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject. Yeah. So this is. Thank you for that verse, uh, Joe. I think this is a great verse because um, this tells us that there's a limit. Right. Again, there's a limit that there's some people I've already talked to a few times. I'm I, I'm not interested in having another one on one with them. I'm really not. I've talked to them a couple of times and, and they, they refuse to reject. I, I'm sorry. They refuse to accept the doctrine and reject their heresy. So I'm done. Right. And, and, and that doesn't mean I go off on them. I, I continue to pray for them. Per adventure, God will grant them repentance. Right. I want them to come to their senses. Thank you, Robert M. A lot of folks done kids done left the church now because save quote unquote parents done went too far. Don't get me wrong. I believe now. Nah, I, I believe in correcting now. Nah, I don't let my kids say no, no, no. Thank God. I got three sons. They are respectful, but we taught them to be respectful, right? You let them get smart and all that talk back. No mother. Shut up, father. Whoo. Something rose up in me right then. But shut, shut up. Oh, no, 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 sir. No, ma'am. And I, I'm here to say, that my my uh oldest son uh, i'm about to tell my age <laughs> let's just say i got three sons and they all grown <laughs> and not one time have they ever at least not out loud now i don't know what they said in their mind, <laughs> but 
But not one time have any of them said, shut up, dad. <laughs> not one time. <laughs> now, they might. Who knows what they said in their mind? But I'm one of them kind of parents. where I look at you. And if you look like you're thinking something wrong, come on here. <laughs> I'm going to knock the look off your face. <laughs> no, let me stop. But uh, <laughs> but see, but I'm, I'm, I'm old school. Yeah, I'm Roger. I'm old school, too. Yes, sir. Yo, you got some good parents there, Roger, if they old school. See. Right. See, now, see, Lee, I'm trying not to tell nobody and you want to tell everybody. <laughs> yes, my oldest is something like 30. <laughs> Woo. See, and I'm just 35. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. See. <laughs> right. Somebody said slap him in the middle of the next week. Go get my switch. Oh, yeah. I done heard all of that. <laughs> Boy, I hit you so hard. You wake up tomorrow. <laughs> oh yeah yeah i didn't hear all that get kicked in the middle of next week yeah chris i didn't hear that too he's not that much younger than me oh yeah oh yeah so so i've been doing this a little while y'all pray for pray for the preacher <laughs> i want to be like joshua and caleb caleb specifically that he said god have renewed my strength i want to have a renewed strength that i continue to do what god has called us to do all right so, again, how do we handle the heretic? We we identify, we correct their false doctrine. And there are times where we call names. I don't immediately call a name all the time because sometimes I may still be trying to reach out and help the person in a way. But sometimes there's a when, especially when the person is having a large impact on a lot of people and they're teaching publicly uh, and causing people to go astray. Sometimes you got to come right out and say, do not listen to brother so-and-so. He is a false teacher. I just told somebody that today. Matter of fact, all right. Seely said, I just got neglected as a kid. I'm 35. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Right. Hey, Robert, you better not bring back no tweet because if you make them go get it, oh, you're going to get it worse. Oh, yeah. So... <laughs> Most excellent Theophilus said, I heard somebody say, I'll beat your black behind blue and then use the blue to beat your beat you back black. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You know, you know, we parents, we know how to come up with some phrases too. some of them phrases might have been borderline abuse. But <laughs> thank God we didn't actually do what we said we was going to do. <laughs> but as a child, I believed it. When my mama said I'll knock you in the next week, I, I believed it. <laughs> And I was thinking in my mind, like, man, am I going to wake up Wednesday? No, I don't want that. I mean, I really believe that would happen. <laughs> All right. All right. So as we begin to bring this to a close, I'm going to open it up for some questions. Anybody got any questions? Put them in the chat. There were other so many other verses I wanted to go to, but I think we covered some good ones here. Notice Paul called out Hymenaeus and Philetus. Paul identified the doctrine that they were teaching. Paul said that they subvert whole households. Paul is saying, avoid them. Do not listen to them. Do not subscribe to them. Do not listen to their teachings. Do not absorb their teachings. Right. This is what Paul was saying. Right. But Paul was not saying that you have a Christian right to cuss folk out. Let me tell you, and let me say this, y'all. There are some people that I have personally disfellowship. Right. I don't deal with no more. I just don't because I don't think they represent the type of Christianity that I want to represent. Seriously, I don't. <laughs> Sometimes they come in my chat. I ignore them. <laughs> I don't even I don't even call your name. See, uh, I personally disfellowship because you have failed, not because you made a mistake or got upset, but because you fail to repent of it. You fail to repent of it. And so I, I don't do, and, and I'm going to tell you the reason why, let me say this y'all, the reason why Christian leaders, pastors, elders, YouTube channels, whatever can continue to do it is because we don't check them on it. No, we don't check them on it. Number one, because listen, just like we got to call out the false doctrine, we got to call off false behavior. Notice what Paul said, take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. And so we, you're, almost called y'all a hypocrite, but not, not, not saying you're a hypocrite, but if we, we're hypocrites, if we, we want to check, uh, the, 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 you know, Sakari and IUIC, you know, for their wickedness, but we don't want to correct the Christian 
because they hold to the tenets of the faith. Maybe they believe in the Trinity, but their, their behavior is foul. You don't correct it. You're a hypocrite. Oh, Jesus. I feel like preaching now. <laughs> See, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I'm going to tell you and you're wrong. See, I don't care. Uh, I don't care if you uh, a Christian or not. <laughs> also, you know, we should. I don't want to be a hypocrite. Uh, Brother Roger asks what to do with the teacher that's not a heretic, but teaches some heresy. Is it safe to still learn from them? Well, I guess it depends on what that heresy is. Because if you teach a heresy <laughs> and you haven't repented from it, they may be a heretic. So, so give me an example, Roger, of a doctrine like that. Right now, there could be error in doctrine, right? Um, that may not, uh, that may not mount up to the level of heresy. You, you understand what I mean? Um, you could be wrong about something, right? You can be wrong about something and not necessarily be a heretic. Right. So if you can give me an example of a doctrine and specifically, maybe I can address that more clear. All right. Another question. Roger, Roger asks, can we tell if someone is of a reprobate mind? Um, in most cases, no. Sometimes if we it could, we might be able to say it seems like this person's rubbing man, but at the end of the day, only God knows. And that's just truthfully. You know, now God may give somebody some spiritual insight. I don't think he's doing that on a normal or regular basis or giving that to the average Joe. You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, uh, as a pastor, as a leader, God may deal with me about a member or in the congregation, right, that I'm trying to help or minister to. Um, but why would God, you, a person who not your member, right. <laughs> you know, and he didn't reveal to you that this person is, has a reprobate man. I, I I'm real careful. Right. Uh, the SDA church is a heretical church and we should not listen to them at all. And I, and I know that's harsh y'all. I know that's seems harsh, but it's true because I'm gonna tell you something. Uh, the Bible says this, do me and gather uh, grapes among thorns and thistles. You know what the, the point of that is? Me and gathering grapes among thorns and thistles. There could be a grape, a good grape in there. But when you stick your hand in there to grab that grape, you're going to get infected by the thorn and the thistle. You're going to ah, you're gonna stick yourself. It's like, oh, you're trying to get to the good. But why are you trying to reach to get that good grape? the thorns and the thistles are uh, impacting you. And so just because a person may preach some things right, their doctrine could be false, so false in other areas to where it even taints that which is seemingly good. See? So no, I do not encourage anybody to listen to the SDA church. Right? Because I think that in the midst of many things that you may, they may say that you might agree with uh, the doctrine that is false is so heretical that it can, it can deter the way you're thinking soundly about biblical things. The SDA church sees uh, Ellen White as an infallible prophet. So much for chew up, chew the meat and spit out the bones. <laughs> now, let me say this now, now, now I don't want to be an extreme, right? Um, there could be a church uh, like me, me, this is my brother, Joe, me and him. We go at it about eschatology sometimes, right? We don't hold the same eschatology, right? Um, that's a secondary doctrine. Some doctrines are secondary and we don't have to fall out about it. Um, I got some, uh, is my brother Al Alton in here, right? Alton is a Calvinist, right? I don't agree with Calvinism. But Alton's my brother in Christ. I just told y'all to subscribe to his channel. I think Alton preaches sound doctrine, right? I don't agree with him on that area. I think that overall it falls into a secondary matter, you know, right? 
you know, if he starts teaching Calvinism, just change the channel. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> I'm just joking. Listen to it, you know, and search the scriptures. Uh, so, but I think that's secondary. All right. I think that's secondary. Um, and so what I don't want to do is go from one extreme to the other. Okay. So I want to be clear about that. Uh, let's see here. Next question. Anthony Hall, please explain first John three, nine. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin for his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Bless you, Anthony Hall. Yeah. See, this is where a more modern translation can be helpful, my brother. So let me go to the ESV. Um, real quick and go to what was that first John 3 9 uh watch what it says here let me share the screen All right notice what he says no one who is born of God makes a practice of sinning see we don't speak in old English language and when you read that it makes it seem like if you're born of God, you don't sin at all. And see, that's the heresy that Apostle Lewis teaches. And that's just false. And you got people living in condemnation or lying. Got people either lying, saying they haven't sinned, or you got uh, people living in condemnation, knowing they, they have, and they keep being told they're not, you know, that they can never make a mistake. Now, we shouldn't. We should strive to live holy and righteously. But we don't make a practice of sinning, right? So let's say I get upset tonight and I call somebody a, a dodo head. <laughs> I shouldn't do that. That is, that's, that's sinful. That's sinful. If I call somebody out of their name, hello. If I say you ain't worth nothing, that's sinful. Christ died for that person. Do you hear me? That's sinful. And I would expect all y'all to call me out on it. Now, Ella Mike. And y'all know what I should do? I should come right on here and say, you all, I repent. And I should look that person in the face and I should say, I apologize. You know, though I may be right about the doctrine I'm sharing, I have not been right about the ethics that I've displayed. And I'm going to tell y'all something. Because we don't check people, folks going to keep doing it. And guess what? We guilty. See, we good on correcting uh, the heretics who preach Jesus, not the son of God, you know, salvation by the law. You know, we, we don't mind correcting people on that. But we, all of a sudden we get weak and scared when we have to correct our own when a behavior in their ethics aren't lining up with scripture. I'm going to tell you all when we start correcting people and we start holding them accountable, we start saying no until you repent. Uh, you can't come on my channel no more. Right. Until you repent. I'm unsubscribing from you until you repent. I can't listen to you no more. When we start doing that, that's, that'll help. That's going to help people repent. But when we say, well, that's okay. That's okay. You know what I'm saying? My brother Cavante, what's up, bro? Appreciate you for tuning in. Right? When we say, but when we, when we, when we excuse their bad behaviors, but then we, we get all self-righteous when it comes to the person who say you got to keep the law to be saved. We are hypocrites. Mm, Lord, I feel feel the Holy Spirit working. <laughs> All right. Bless you for the super chat, Elder Joe. Appreciate you, my brother. Right. Let me see. Let me get through a couple more questions here. Uh, how can limited atonement be considered a secondary issue? Uh, because, okay, that's a great question. I have a major problem with the doctrine of limited atonement. Right. But the doctrine of limited atonement is simply the belief that so let me tell you what they believe is that everybody who believes will be saved okay i want you to understand that this is why it falls into the secondary category now it's important i i, I preach against it making make make it make i'm making plain here however uh they do preach that everybody who believes will be saved they do believe and preach that uh you know, salvation is by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. 
They simply believe that everybody who believes are the people who God actually shed his blood for. And the people who don't believe, well, Christ didn't, in a sense, waste any blood, right? And so uh, he didn't shed his blood for them. Now, I have a major problem with the doctrine. But when, when you hear them preaching, they're not getting up saying Christ didn't die for you. Then they're, they're not saying that. If they did, it might slide over to heresy, right? If they looked at a person and say Christ didn't die for you, they're not, they're in heresy. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna be clear. But they don't preach that. Right. The way the reason why it's considered secondary is because we both would preach the same gospel. We really would. You, my Calvinist brothers that I love, we would I got up on a pulpit and preached the gospel. They got got up on a pulpit and preached the gospel. It's gonna be identical. Right. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that if you believe in him, right, you can be saved. Right. You don't have to perish, but have everlasting life. They'll, it's going to be the same gospel. Right. But how it all works out and the way they explain it is is quite different than how I would explain. it. So I do not make my Calvinist brothers heretics. And I think we should be careful uh, before we make anybody a heretic. Right. All right. So it's a great question. Great question. Right. It's up now. Question. Elder, appreciate your love and teachings. How does this how does this be nice not fall in the works category? No, listen, it does fall in the works category. <laughs> Christians should have good works. Let me show you that. Let me show you that. Christians should have good works. Now, works don't save us. But watch this. Ephesians chapter number two. Our favorite verse, our favorite verse, but we often leave a verse off, right? Appreciate you for the question. Oh, it's a great question, but watch this, brother. For by grace, you have been saved. So it's clear that we're saved by grace through the vehicle of faith, right? So we must have, we must believe, right? And because of the grace of God, through faith, God saves us. And it's not your own doing, right? Your works do not save you. It is the gift of God, not a result of works. So our salvation is not a result of works. You do not work for your salvation, which is why no one can boast. Now, we usually stop right here after verse number nine. But watch this, brother. Paul goes on to say in verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. See, James said it this way. If you say you have faith and you don't have works, <laughs> your faith is void. Faith produces good works. See, the faith doesn't save us, but if you have genuine faith, it should produce good works. So anybody who's saying they save and got faith in God, but they lying, cheating, fornicating, cussing, calling people out their names, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Because they're not producing the good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Walk in what? Good works. So Paul was clear. You say by grace through faith. It's not your own doing. Your salvation is not a result of works. You cannot boast. However, we are his workmanship, the Holy Spirit working in us so we can be for good works. So, no, every believer should have good works. All right. I want to be clear there. Dunamis asked the question, what if pastor... Uh, what if a pastor teaches bad doctrine, but sound secular advice like prosperity pastor that teaches good money management? That's interesting. I have no problem with teaching good money management. Right. But a false prosperity preacher who's talking about sow a seed and in three days, you know, I mean, you got your breakthrough coming. You know, God told me that the, the next two people who sow a seed are $200. He's going before 12 o'clock midnight, your breakthrough is coming. All that nonsense. All that garbage. You never see the apostles doing that. That, that. No, I would leave that church immediately. 
leave that church. I mean, that see, that is the ethics. You might search the by the 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 what we believe statements, and it might seem like they landing up. But if they carry it on like that, then their ethical behavior now has crossed into uh, heterodoxy or that which contradicts orthodox teachings. See? So bad doctrine never is, produces good fruit. So if you're a prosperity pastor, you, you, you know what I mean? I believe in biblical prosperity, right? Biblical prosperity is this, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Biblical prosperity is this, right? Paul said, I've learned how to, how to abound, how to be a base, how to suffer need, how to have, and how to lack. See, that's biblical prosperity is that my soul prospers in spite of my financial dilemma, right? Now, I do agree that the church should be practicing good, sound, biblical uh, money management, right? So I'm, I'm with that wholeheartedly. Thank you. Kavante say that's not essential. And I'm a Calvinist who affirms it. Thank you. Kavante appreciate you, brother. See Calvinist, my brother, that's my brother in Christ. Right. You know, a couple years ago I had to help him, but now he all, now I'm just joking. <laughs> he going to get me for saying that, <laughs> but no, Calvante is my brother in Christ. We, 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 we get on the battlefield together sometimes against some false teaching. So that's my brother in Christ. All right. No problem, Hamilton. All right. Question. Do you believe there are principles of the doctrine of Christ? Hebrews 6, 1. Wouldn't those principles be essential uh, doctrine? Ye uh, yes. Yes, they would be. Right. And those essentials start with, um, you know, repentance from dead works, faith toward God. Right. So you can't be saved by works. Uh, we must have faith in God. Right. Baptisms. Right. Holy Spirit baptism, uh, you know, um, what else he goes on to say? Uh, judgment and all those things, right? I, I'm trying to go off the top of my head. However, yes, I would I would say those are essential. Yes. There is no second work of grace. <laughs> no, there isn't. You either got grace or you don't, right? Hope I didn't miss any questions. I'm trying to catch them all. Uh, uh, I wouldn't consider a person who believes that a heretic. All right. But uh, it is error, though. Got to show the false prosperity. Got, got to show the false prosperity gospel preachers that some love elder. Got to be fair now. I'm <laughs> he said he messing with me. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, the, the false prosperity doctrine. No, that doctor. Listen, man, listen. <laughs> and I know you, you just messing with me. But let me say this. That false prosperity preacher, he going to bust hell wide open if he don't repent. He's raping the people of God. I'm talking about these. So a hundred dollars seed, the next 10 people and he living in, in the best of houses, driving a proportion. You know what I'm saying? So to you, if you bless the man of God, you and stop it. Mm -mm. Tom Mitch says, I believe the Calvinism checks the boxes, but if sinners are doomed from the start with no chance of salvation, that's not secondary doctrine. Well, wait a minute now. Um, I don't think they believe that in that way. Um, however, um, they don't preach that as a gospel. You understand what I'm saying? They, they don't preach that as a gospel. Uh, and again, there are some people that's going to hell, right? Got me defending my Calvinist brothers. Lord have mercy. There are some people who are going to hell, y'all. And it's because they won't repent. Right? God knows who they are. And he knew who they were before he created them. Yet he created them anyway. <laughs> See? Now, it's still their own rejection that's causing them to go to hell. So from the Calvinist perspective, that's what they mean. That's what they mean about a non-elect. Uh, now, although I totally disagree with them, I just want to be fair to them, right? I want to be fair to them. Yeah. Now, some, well, it depends. Some word of faith churches are worse than others. But yes, if that word of faith pastor is talking all that nonsense and raping the people of God, listen, the Bible says it's better for you to tie a millstone around your neck and be cast into the sea than to offend one of uh, these little ones, right? To offend the church, to rape the people of God. 
I'm telling you, these people need to repent. Dunamis says that's where you go for the training, but once the Oregon kicks up, that's when you leave. <laughs> Listen, I don't even mind the Oregon, but with that Oregon, you better be quoting the scriptures properly. <laughs> you know, because some of those things just become uh, cultural practices, and there's nothing wrong with that. See, we don't have to have church the way everybody else had church. See, and that's okay. Uh, liturgical practices can vary amongst uh, uh, cultures, denominations, and things like that. Uh, however, uh, sound doctrine cannot be compromised on. Oh, he said secular training. I got you. I got you, bro. Yes, sir. All right. Resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. Oh, yeah, those are mandatory doctrines. See, one, we all must believe in the resurrection of the dead, and we all must believe that there's an eternal judgment. See, now how all that pans out, if it's going to be a seven year this and, and after that, this going to happen, it's going to be a thousand years. And then this, that, all that becomes the secondary part. But we all must believe in the resurrection of the dead. That's mandatory. And now when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen, how, how many resurrections. See, some people think it's two resurrections. There's really three. Uh, some say four resurrections and the re all that part is secondary. But we all must believe in the resurrection of the dead bodily resurrection and we all must believe in the eternal judgment absolutely those are not secondary doctrine all right gotta get the tithe thumpers too cursing people for not tithe yeah i agree uh we're not under the law and anytime you pronounce it a curse upon someone you have gone beyond the scriptures you out of order now i think Nah, I'm gonna get stoned. I, I just a brother came at me hard the other day. I personally do more than the tithe, right? We say we under a better covenant, built on better promises. That's my conviction, right? I encourage people to give, you know, above 10%, <laughs> right? Some people can give more than 10%. See, I'm going to tell you, the flip side of this is God going to get some people for not for not supporting the ministry like they should. Can I get y'all see people don't want to hear this part. God going to get some people because you dropping that sanctified George Washington, you making six, six figures. <laughs> see, so we got to get them both. But you're, you're right, Pastor Ryan. When people go on and start saying, if you don't have you curse for the curse, you better bless it. Man. No, you out of order. See, I believe in the principle of tithing. And that simply means is that, you know, that a good practice in a lot of church folk give 10%. There's nothing wrong with that. What, when it becomes wrong is when you start trying to mandate people and saying they're not saved, you curse with a curse. Uh, that's when it becomes wrong. All right. Uh, Dunamis says, would you say that the virgin birth is essential? Absolutely. You don't believe in a virgin birth. You don't have a biblical Jesus. How are the doctrines essential? Then the specifics about the doctrine non-essential because you don't know the specifics <laughs> and God didn't give us all the specifics. <laughs> I know sometimes we think we got it all figured out and we may have some things right when it comes to some of these eschatological practices. Right. But but, you know, it's not. Essential. In other words, if you pre-trib and I'm post-trib or if you. You post trip because I think you are post trip, and I'm pre trip. God is not gonna send me to hell because I thought He was gonna come before He did. Think about that. What sin is it in believing that He was gonna come before He did? So let's say I'm pre trip and post trip is right, and He comes post trip. God, ain't, you going to hell because you said I was coming seven years earlier? No, 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 I'm not. That's what makes it secondary. See, if you can go to hell for it, it's primary. See, that's what I mean by second. Secondary means you're not going to go to hell for it. That's what, you know, if I can break it down that way. All right. Elder Mike, this is one of your better teachings I've heard from you. Well, thank you. <laughs> I pray for me on the rest of them. I try to do better for you. <laughs> I see the Bible as a mirror. Be ex examine self rather than examining others. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Now, don't get me wrong. We do have a responsibility. If y'all see me slipping, you you are you are your brother's keeper. Right. Right. Folk are also very stingy and think the pastor should suffer and have nothing. That's true. That's true. Right. 
The Bible says, muzzle not the mouth of the ox that treads out the corn, right? Somebody say, I got a five figure income. He said, no, I didn't say five finger. <laughs> My brother, John, bless you, bro, man. Appreciate you. <laughs> All right, listen, let me get ready to jump off here. Ooh, look at the time. Let me get ready to get off here. Brother Kobe in the house. Bless you, bro. Yeah, let me get ready to jump off here. Listen, so listen, let's keep that in mind. Take heed to yourself and your doctrine, right? You believe a lie and didn't love the truth. Bro, that is, uh, you are eisegeting that text, Joe. <laughs> Second Thessalonians 2 and 10 is not about whether or not a person holds to a preacher or a post uh coming to the Lord. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Stop it. Are you trying to say that if you are not 100% right about every single thing in the Bible, you going to hell, then you going to hell. And so am I. So am I. We're growing into the knowledge. Paul said, I count not myself to have apprehended. Well, Paul, you're teaching a lot. You're going to hell. No, 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 no. There's some things that are obscure that uh, God gives us liberty, right? You may not have 100%, right? Come on, man. You believe a lie. No, man, that, that's just that's just a misapplication of the text, my dear brother. You know, I love you, but 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 you misapplying that text. All right. Listen, let me jump off here. Y'all love y'all, man. Appreciate y'all for tuning in with us on tonight. Um, uh, we will talk to you all on the next time. Y'all have a wonderful evening. <laughs>